Shocking new results from a presidential approval poll from Gallup. I'm Scott Ott, and this is Bill Whittle now. And Bill, at the head start of this, I'm going to acknowledge that we're going to be talking a little bit about politics and things that may seem trivial in light of the current uh, pandemic crisis. However, I would direct our viewers to the many other programs that we've done at BillWhittle.com, including your Coronasphere Lounge, episodes of Bill Whittle Now, episodes of Right Angle, all of which are, um, frankly, in my view, uh, taking a more serious uh, view of this crisis. Uh, not that this is trite, uh, but it's it's just not about people's lives. Um, it is fascinating, though, Bill, because a new Gallup poll, that um, which they stopped taking about Sunday of this past week, as we record this on the 25th of March, um, shows that uh, president's approval rating in general is up about five points to 49%. And specifically, they attribute that to his high approval rating for his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic crisis. Some 60% of Americans approving of his handling of that. When you break it down by party, 94% of Republicans, 60% of independents, and even 20% of Democrats. And those numbers for independents and Democrats are going up. And in fact, under just the president's general approval rating, it's uh, th they measured this gap, which is kind of the net approval rating between uh, people who approve and people who disapprove. And right, right. now, uh, typically the president has no gap. It's usually 49, 48 or something like that. Uh, right now, it's actually five points, which is uh, among the best that it's ever been for President Trump. Um, I guess, Bill, the first thing that occurred to me is how is it possible, despite the, frankly, um, cacophony of negative news about the president's handling of it and how he, you know, is either ignorant or obnoxious or he doesn't care for science and all that kind of stuff, what it seems to be the daily drumbeat in most of the major media sources in the country. Nevertheless, uh, Mediaite is actually where I found this story. Mediaite, which is, you know, not a right-wing uh, entity, has said that they are stunned with these approval rating numbers. What do you make of it? Well, the first thing in terms of um, the gap that you say is normally not there between uh, so much between the approve and the disapprove and and the difference between Trump's personal approval rating and his approval rating on dealing with the crisis, I think is clearly uh, nothing more or less than people who don't like President Trump grudgingly admitting that he's doing a good job on this one. A and as that gap continues to increase, that I think that represents more and more people who on a daily basis are saying he seems to be doing everything that's humanly possible. He's got his medical advisors that are speaking. They're not they're not resigning from the task force and Trump isn't firing them. Um, and and that kind of ties into your second point, which is uh, people who are not already uh, either conservatives or Republicans or fans of President Trump are doing this in the face of a of a of an absolute media onslaught. To thoroughly discredit the president, we talked about this um, on our uh, right angle show on the on uh, called the War President this week, where we took a look just in passing at a couple of specific examples where the media just came out and said that Dr. Fauci is at war with Donald Trump, basically throwing himself in front of the microphone, saying, "Please, man, please don't say another word. Every word you're saying is costing millions of lives." And, and, and the face palm and all this other stuff. And you find out, no, it's not a face palm. He's stifling a cop. And you find out, no, uh, there's not a, a huge disagreement. No, Dr. Dr. Fauci is not saying Trump's not listening to me. On the contrary, he's saying he is listening to me. And the media is trying to portray this war. So the short answer, Scott, of, of what you asked is, it's, it's becoming a situation where the American people are looking at what's unfolding and being asked, who are you going to believe, the media or your own lion eyes? You know, it seems that media, uh, it's, I don't, it's hard for me to imagine that they wrote this paragraph um, based on the fact that they're stunned by the 60% approval rating. But here, a little bit down in the story, um, they are counterposing the numbers in the approval rating uh, with this. After, and I'm quoting now from this Mediaite story, after weeks of downplaying and denying the seriousness of the COVID-19 outbreak and amid an ever worsening pandemic, continued shortfalls in testing and equipment mm, and mm. crashing stock prices during the week in which Gallup's poll was conducted. It ended before the we had the recovery uh, this week, the poll was over. Uh, Trump, uh, then it mentions grudgingly, Trump did receive praise from media fingers uh, figures for a shift in tone and a shift to daily appearances at press briefings. but. 
media like goes and piles all this on and they're basically saying, here's why these are stunning numbers because this is the narrative that we and others in the media have been advancing. Nevertheless, the American people who apparently uh, rely on us uh, don't believe us. One of the things that we've been talking about well before COVID-19, one of the things that, uh, a theme that I've been developing uh, through uh, things like the, the public's rejection of Star Wars and things like that, which many people think are trivial, which I, I think are far from trivial. One of the things that I think we're seeing is the, is the absolute destruction of what's left of the credibility of the, of the pillars of progressivism and their ability to control the way Americans think by controlling not only the information they receive, but also the social cues that they receive. And all of these weapons that the left has had for 50 or 60 years and done so much damage to the country with are rusting in their hands. And, and not to, to go into a great deal of detail about this, but clearly the value of a Harvard education was more prestigious 50 years ago than it is today. And clearly the belief in the NBC nightly news or the CBS evening news was far higher in terms of credibility 50 years ago than it was today. And clearly movie stars and, and celebrities had more impact on how people feel about things 50 years ago when they were admired figures than they are today. All of this stuff is dissolving in their hands. And every time they decide that they're gonna go further and further and further to drag their uh, policies over the line, what, whatever is left of their credibility continues to erode. And, and, and it, this, this bias has been obvious to conservatives for at least, at least, at least 15 years and, and considerably longer. Independents seem to be getting the idea. And now what we're hearing, at least anecdotally, is large numbers of lifelong Democrats are saying it's getting harder and harder and harder for me to defend this party uh, in the face of the evidence that we're seeing that so much of what they're trying to do is to convince the American people to undo the horrible mistake they made in 2016 and, and make sure it doesn't happen again. It's a full court press, and if you'll pardon the expression, and, um, and I think what the virus is doing is I think that, that the virus is showing people that this bias and this, and this desire to, to, to nail this president at any cost, even if it's in the cost of jobs or lives, I think the virus has, has brought out the degree to which the media doesn't care about anything other than the destruction of President Trump. And I think that's why that gap is there and increasing. People can see during the daily president's uh, uh, virus uh, briefings that clearly things are happening. And by the way, that, that, that leads me to kind of an insight that I didn't have just a split second ago. The media, the media constructs their narrative by taking a statement that Donald Trump makes, spinning it, and then presenting it as news, framing it, and so on. For, as a great example of this, the New York Times headline just a couple days ago were Dems block uh, COVID relief package, which was rapidly changed to um, bipartisan dickering uh, blocks COVID release package. So they're able to take information that's pre-recorded or, or snippets, spin it, and, and push it out there. But one of the things that I had not realized until really just now is that the president having a daily briefing on, on the virus is the equivalent of the presidential debates, which I've said, and many people have said, that is the only time those three presidential debates that we traditionally have before the, the presidential election, those are the only three times in the entire cycle, really in the entire four years of the presidency, that the media doesn't get to interject itself between what they're actually saying and what the American people see. They get to see it live. And Bill, perhaps could, this is why I've seen several calls from the media, including I think Rachel Maddow at MSNBC. I may be wrong about that, but I think it was her. Getting to stop the And briefings. several others say, calling on the media to stop live broadcast of mm -hmm. the briefing from the White House. Um, right. You know, it, it, whether you think the president is a prevaricator or not, don't you think at a time like this, even if you're on the far opposite end of the spectrum from him politically, that you almost have a moral obligation to give them the unvarnished news from the White House. You can do your spin afterward. Well, a moral obligation implies a moral base, doesn't it? Oh, and they would say the president has none, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah. So, so when you hear Rachel Maddow say the president should not be allowed to do daily briefings, he should just shut up and get out of the way. It's an indication that the president is doing a pretty good job. Well, they're um, saying don't carry it live. Essentially, that after right. record right. it and then why, go and, why and record it. Why on earth? It. 
Exactly. Why on earth would a news agency carry the president's daily address buttressed by any number of scientific experts on the daily progress of this worldwide pandemic. Why on earth would you want that live? Why can't we just send cameras there so that we can edit out the parts that we don't like, edit together the things that were actually said in such a way as to make him look like an idiot or a tyrant, and then we can recontrol the media. We can uh, rather recontrol the, the story, recontrol the narrative. When you hear people saying that President Trump uh, should not be giving the press conferences live, that's all the evidence you need that he's doing a good job. And and furthermore, the thing that's really driving them nuts, really driving them nuts, is, is the fact that uh, at some point in this process, and it was relatively early in the process, it's no longer Donald Trump saying things are under control, don't worry, because that's how things looked at the time. Now, it's Donald Trump saying, we're working on this, we're getting there, be hopeful, we're looking good, we're America, we're going to pull through. Here comes a scientific question. Okay, now Donald Trump's going to put his foot in it because he's so anti-science, doesn't know anything about anything. And up comes a scientific question, a specific medical question, and Trump ste steps back and up steps this widely, pretty much universally respected epidemiologist who calmly answers the question. How the hell are you going to construct a narrative about tyranny or idiocy from a president who's not willing to bungle a medical question because he allows his medical expert to answer it. It's a difficult thing for these Democrats. They're in quite a pickle here. This is the final question, Bill. And, and I don't know um, exactly how to ask this, but it seems to me that when you see results like this and, and you've got the almost the entire media moving as one force against the president, and yet the American public, even Democrats and independents in growing numbers, are saying, yeah, he's doing a good job with this. Uh, I wonder if the people that are really sort of sustaining the left wing media, if you want to call it that, are really people in the right wing media who like to pick these fights and play the clips and draw attention to these people who apparently most of the American public is ignoring. Do you think we're, you know, the right is essentially shooting ourselves in the foot by, by drawing unnecessary attention to a group that doesn't have any credibility anyway? Are you saying that, uh, and, and I mean this in all sincerity, I don't quite understand the question. Sure. Are you saying, are you saying that conservatives should not be pointing out that Rachel Maddow wants the president's uh, address to not be live? Are, yeah, I'm, are you I'm saying not saying, I, I, obviously I don't want to stop anybody from their freedom of speech, but I think you're on no, the no, right, no, I'm saying, you're I'm, on the right thread there is, is the idea that, you know, if the right did not draw attention. Like I never would have known about what Rachel Maddow said if it hadn't been for the fact that some right-wing media site or blogger, uh, you know, got that going on social media and got it circulated. And so everybody well, then, went, oh, look what Rachel Maddow said. When if you ignored her, she might just fade into the background. No, you've got, I think you've got it completely backwards there. The fact that you didn't know that Rachel Maddow had called for the president to stop giving live briefings or or then uh, to call for them to stop being live and then just record them so we can edit them is a, is a pretty damning statement from a news agency to say that we should not be getting live updates from the president, that this daily news uh, conference that he gives on the coronavirus is a mistake and we should edit it down, that the American people should not be allowed to see what the president is saying in real time to them directly. That's our job to determine what the president's saying to the American people. To, to know that Rachel Maddow is making that case is to understand that that is a pretty thin and specious argument and that the reason you would make an argument like that, and apparently the only reason you'd make an argument like that, is you don't like the fact that by having these press conferences live, the American people are seeing that Donald Trump is behaving in a responsible fashion, a competent fashion, and his numbers are going up. There's very little other conclusions that you can come to. I'm not so saying the say right that, is wrong about their conclusions no, no, about Rachel Maddow. What I'm saying but, is, but aren't we just unnecessarily got, no, drawing attention to an no, insignificant character? No, I'm answering, I'm answering your question. First of all, she's not an insignificant character. She is the voice of progressivism. She is the media voice of progressivism. She's the Rush Limbaugh of the left as far as that's concerned. And if she's saying something, then that's important. But but you, you've answered your own question. You didn't know about it before the right started saying that Rachel Maddow is saying this. And that means that many people didn't know that Rachel Maddow was saying this, who aren't already Rachel Maddow fans, fans and they find it quite Interesting. Yes. Well, um, I'm just saying like me, like most of America is not listening to Rachel Maddow. We are not. But, but Scott, if you, if you, I'm not listening to Rachel Maddow either. 
But my point is, it's important to know what Rachel Maddow is saying to the people who she's speaking to. And she is part of this progressive media uh, complex that is trying to determine the narrative for the United States. And when she makes a statement like that, it's about as plain a statement as you can make that what they're basically saying that the entire let the spokesperson for the left is saying is, we don't think that the American people should have live access to the president of the United States addressing them on a daily basis in terms of a national emergency. That's what the paragon of the left is saying. And it's important that people understand that that's what the left is saying, that that is their position, because Rachel Maddow is the preeminent spokesperson for the far left progressive movement. And that means that she is she is essentially the vanguard. She's the open She's the openly leftist version of what virtually everybody else is thinking who's in the left wing media, including virtually everybody at CNN and all the way down the line. If Rachel Maddow was saying it out loud, that means that everybody at CNN is thinking it. Same for ABC, NBC, CBS and all the rest, with the possible exception of Fox. And that and that's important. That's news. That is that is an example that that the American people need to see. One person is saying something and the other. And what this person is saying is don't believe your own lying eyes about what you're watching in real time. Don't believe that. We've already told you what you're supposed to believe. We've already told you that you're supposed to be in full panic. We've already told you that the man is incompetent and evil. We've already told you that it's out of control. We've already told you that we're going to have to be quarantined for 18 months. We've already told you that the economy is going to collapse. We've already told you that millions of people are going to die as a result of this man's incompetence. So for God's sakes, whatever you do, don't watch him in action, because if you do, you are likely to change your mind about what we've told you to think. And that's not acceptable. How on earth are we going to drag the, the galvanized remains of, of Joe Biden across the finish line if you're given daily access to the president of the United States behaving like a chief executive officer who is marshalling resources in record time? to not only go after this virus, but furthermore, as if to add insult to injury, not only is the president mobilizing resources and his approval numbers are increasing, he's not mobilizing the resources that we said he should mobilize. He's, he's, not, he's not mobilizing the federal government. He's not empowering the federal government. He's telling the federal government to get out of the way. He's letting the states handle this. He's bringing business into it. He's, he's saying that there are thousands of people or com companies out there, certainly hundreds of companies that could be manufacturing products right now that could be helping people to survive. And that's not the same as saying we've increased funding for the Center for Disease Control. And that bothers them too. So of course they want him to shut up. They always want him to shut up. They always want us to shut up. And, and, and for Rachel Maddow to come out and say, basically verbatim, that we think that it's a mistake for news media to cover the president's live address to the American people live is an indication that they know that by speaking live to the American people at length and by watching him actually perform rather than what they tell you he's performing like, it is destroying their ability to paint him as orange man bad who must be removed at all cost, and that's why they're saying it. It's pretty clear. It's clear to pretty much everybody. That's why the president's approval numbers of the, of the handling of the crisis are high. And, and I'll just add a final button to this, Scott. The media has created such a panic. They have created such a sense that we are in the bring out your dead plague and, 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 and all of this. They've so oversold it. I'm not saying it's not serious. It's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is they have oversold the black death aspect of it. So that when Donald Trump continues to do what he's doing, or as a matter of fact, if you really want to get down to brass tacks, even if Donald Trump hadn't done anything, even if he hadn't done anything, they oversold the, the, the severity of this to the degree that, yes, they got a short term gain out of it by making people nuts and, and hysterical and all the rest of it. But the long term cost, like the impeachment circus, will be to their detriment, because no matter what happens going forward at this point, it's not going to be as bad as what they have said, what they've continued to say, what they continue to say from now on, which is expect to be locked in your home for the next 18 months if you want people to live. That's not going to happen. And when it doesn't happen and people get back to work and we take our losses and serious losses, but nothing like what they're talking about, then they're going to be even more in trouble. And so is their policies. And so, so are their policies. And so are their candidates. And so are they. This will be 
This will be the what I'm saying versus your own lying eyes, Custer's last stand of the mainstream media, and they know it, and I know it, and the American people know it, and you know it too. Ladies and gentlemen, I think if uh, the media listened to Rachel Maddow and did shut down live coverage of the president's news conferences daily, they would find a stunning thing, and that is that the White House has a website as well as a YouTube channel that and is a Twitter funded account. by the American taxpayer. And we have a website and a YouTube channel here at BillWhittle.com, and those are funded by the members at BillWhittle.com who voluntarily pay rather than have it extracted from them by the government to make sure that these messages can continue to get out. Some of those messages are actually streaming live this week and as starting last week with the coronavirus lounge or the Coronasphere lounge that Bill is producing, as well as some 40 shows uh, a month that we have been doing from right angle to Bill Whittle now um, can I, can to I make sure to that, that the Scotty? message gets out. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I, I do. I, I just do would like I would like to make this appeal to people who are watching this. Uh, we have a, a small, small company here. It's essentially three on-air personalities and, and two support staff. And we've been doing consistently for well over a year now, year and a half, 11 shows a week. And now we're doing um, 18 shows a week. Uh, and and that's, that's, quite a, that's quite a workload for, for basically three or four people. Uh, and, and we could use your help on this. If, if any of this is, is giving you a sense of comfort or any of it giving you a sense of hope or whatever the case may be, uh, we understand that times are tough, and if you're struggling for a job, we certainly would rather have you buy food for your family or, or maintain your, your finances to the best of your degree. But if you can help us by becoming a producer at BillWhittle.com, now would be a good time to do it. We deeply appreciate it. And uh, we're doing our very best to, to present uh, a balanced view of things, which means we don't minimize the risk and we don't give false hope, but we're trying to find all the real hope there really is. And it turns out there's a lot of real hope out there. I will also add um, that we are, on a regular basis, YouTube demonetizes our videos because we deal with controversial topics, although we don't do it in a crazy sort of way. Um, now, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, YouTube has cut back on their human staffing to be able to review those videos, and they've amped up uh, the algorithm's ability to handle those things. And so... We've, and I'm, I'm estimating here, but we've probably seen a doubling of the number of the videos that are being uh, demonetized. Some of those eventually upon review um, get reestablished as uh, being able to generate a little bit of advertising revenue uh, After for us. After the viewing spike is over. Yes. That's, when they, the, that's when they turn on the monetization. That's right. There's an initial surge of viewers that come in when any video gets emailed out and While the video is under review. So, and then... Yes. Yeah. But any, in any case, um, so so that stings a bit, and uh, and we understand why YouTube's been doing it, but um, but it doesn't make it any better for this organization, and so that's why we're ever more grateful for the people who have signed up in recent days as new members at BillWhittle.com. Uh, nothing succeeds like success, and these people have seen that Bill and Steve and I are able to connect with people in ways that others can't, are able to make the arguments that others won't, and are able to do it with a consistency. Um, uh, that is just devastating to uh, you know the the kind of lazy work that's done by the left wing media. So we are glad to be part of this. We're glad to be uh, able to call our members our friends, and we look forward to you joining as a member when you go to BillWhittle.com and click that Become a Member link. For Bill Whittle, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks for watching.